The National Broadcasting Company presents Adventure Ahead. Today, Adventure Ahead takes you on what began as a title-searching trip in the Blue Ridge Mountains with the young lawyer, Jim Martin. This was Jim's first case, and he expected to encounter only a simple problem in law. But soon he was caught up in a desperate struggle of the Stony Fork people to rid themselves of lawless swindlers. It's a yarn that springs from intimate knowledge of these people and the mountains surrounding them, because the author Hubert Skidmore was born in the Blue Ridge country. So Hubert Skidmore's story of Hill Lawyer. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You the only passenger? I guess I am. You'd best sit up here beside me, then. Oh, thanks. I'll be all right back here. Sit up front, mister. Okay. Last fellow sat in back, shot the driver in the back of the head. Oh, I see. So you're not taking chances, huh? No, not on strangers. Yeah. You got business in the fork? Yeah, I'm up here to see a fellow named Sam Dodrow. Oh, are you the lawyer from Charleston? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm James Martin. Uh, Sam, he named it about you coming. My name's Frank Frost. Oh, glad to know you, Frank. I didn't know you back there. That's why I named it you should set up here. I can understand that. You say the last fellow who sat in back shot the driver? What for? The payroll. Payroll? Yeah, uh, killing another fellow made off with it. What payroll? Blogging company. They send money in once a week. You ever had any trouble with it? A couple of times. But the logging company never sends money on the same day twice. Mm. I, um, I see you have a mail sack some there, days did they just send a letter. So there's always be mail sack going across. Mm-hmm. Then no one knows just exactly when the payroll will come through. No, but that don't keep us from getting stopped. Did the money come tonight? No, but nobody knows that but me. Yeah. Always run them through here. Good place for them. Yeah, it certainly is. What? Good Lord, what's that? Oh! Wait. Oh! Who oh, in that stage? Bandits. Hang on, we'll run them first. Yeah! Yeah! Just dandy. Lost in a strange country and in pitch black darkness. Who's there? What? Who's there, I say? Speak up, whoever you are. <coughs> what the devil? <coughs> say, who are you talking? <coughs> now, now, <coughs> take it quiet there, boy. Let me go. You're mighty little to be fighting in the dark so careless like, boy. I, I thought you might be the bandit. Bandit? You mean somebody held up a stage again? Tried to, anyway. When? Where? Right where the road dips down into the mountains. What happened to Frank Frost? Frost? Oh, you mean the driver? Yeah, is he all right? I don't know. How come you're riding one of his horses? I was his only passenger. I'm up here from Charleston to see a fellow named Sam Dodrell. Oh, you must be the lawyer Sam told me about. Well, I guess I am. Name's James Martin. Well, Jim... I'm York Allen, the doctor here. We're a little suspicious of strangers in Stony Fork. I can see that. Now, what about this bandit? Well, he attacked the stage just after we left the junction. Frank made a run for it, now distance him. And how did you two get separated? Well, Frost was afraid the masked man would cut over the mountains and head us off. Yeah, he he could have could have done that at that. There's an old uh, old turkey trail that leads over the mountains, comes out back of Sam Dodrill's Well, place. anyway, Frost was afraid the bandit would take the shortcut, so he unhitched the team and each of us took a horse. Couldn't you keep up with Frank? Well, I couldn't even see him. It was so dark. That's how I got, got lost. Well, come on. I'll guide you into the fort. Well, thanks. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, oh. say, York, yeah? you mentioned an old turkey trail that leads over the hills to Sam Dodrill's place. Mm-hmm. See, uh, Dodrill wrote me about a month ago, asked me to come up. <laughs> He didn't pick you for your size, did he? Well, I didn't figure size would have anything to do with it, since it was just a matter of coal claim a company's holding against him. Well, I can tell you that Sam can sure use a lawyer, providing you're not easily scared. I'll tell you what. 
I'll just take you to his place and introduce you myself. Come on. Sam Dodrell, meet lawyer Jim Martin from Charles. Hello, Sam. Hello, Jim. I'm here to see if I can straighten out your coal claim. Well, there ain't much size to you, is there? Oh, I don't think size matters much, Sam, since it's just a question of a point of law. I'm afraid there's more to it than that, Jim. Why? As far as I can tell, the company has no legal claim on Sam's property. Well, yes and no. Unless, of course, Sam made some oral agreement he didn't tell me about. No, I don't believe there was any spoken agreement. Well, then it's an open and shut case. The company has a three-year contract to remove timber from Sam's property, and that's all. Well, that part of it's simple enough. It's a question of coal that's causing the trouble. Coal? Well, there's no mention of coal in Sam's contract. That's just the point. When coal was discovered under the hills, it caused a lot of excitement. But the logging company's only interest was in the timber, wasn't it? That's what the folks all thought at first. Then they found out that the company was trying to take a coal, too. Well, they never had no right to it. There never was a word said about coal when they bought the timber. Sam's right about that. Well, then, that's simple enough. I'll just get a waiver on the company's claim from the company representative. You mean Fred Wolf? Yeah, I believe Wolf is his name. Yes. Oh, he ain't the one to see. He isn't. Then who is? Oh, I ain't much good at talking, Doc. You tell him. He means Red Clute, Jim. Red Clute? As soon as coal was discovered, Red Clute moved in here with two other cutthroats named Stump Rogers and Bill Perkins. What do they have to do with the coal? Uh, quite a bit. You see, Clute, Rogers, and Perkins went around claiming to be lawyers and signing up folks. Signing them up for what? They promised the people to straighten out the scramble title to the coal rights and to get them a fair price. They'd give the people a dollar to sign some papers and then take the papers back. Mm, I'm beginning to get what you're driving at. Now, these papers were some legal trick that gave Clute the right to buy or sell the property for any price he wanted. Why, that's robbery. I could prove it in any court. I'm afraid you don't know much about the back hill places, Jim. There isn't any court. Well, there's a sheriff, isn't there? Eh, uh, there's a man with a sheriff's badge on. Oh, you mean he works for Clute? That's right, Jim. Clute's got half a valley scared to death. Have you ever had a fight with Clute, York? Clute don't fight like that. If anybody gets in his way, him or Bill Perkins or Stump Rogers go squirrel hunting. First thing you know, somebody comes down from the hills to say they found another body. You mean they even get away with murder? That's my word for it. Well, I can handle the legal end of it, but... I've had no experience in this kind of fighting. Well, we ain't been able to whoop it neither, son, so we reckon none of us will think it might less of you if you'll back out. Sam's right, Jim. You're a lawyer, but this may be a case for a gunman, too. And as Sam says, you're not exactly the size Well, for maybe it. my size is against New York, but I came up here to help Sam Dodrell get his coal claim straightened out, and I intend to. Well, if you feel that way about it. I don't reckon you fetched a gun, did you, Mr. Martin? Well, no, I don't suppose I'll need one. Now, you just might. Here. Of course, I ain't much use for this here hand pistol, but I reckon they're all right for common shooting. I don't know. I never shot one of these things. You better carry it, Jim. I always do when I know there's trouble ahead. Good morning. Is that the company office up there? Ain't you on the wrong side of the river, little man? I don't think so. This is the way to the company office, isn't it? You in here to buy coal? I can't see that's any of your business. I'm making it my business. I don't know your name, but I can guess it. Clute's the name. Red Clute. These here boys are my friends. And we're waiting for an answer to my question. Sorry, but I'm here on business. Will you men let me pass, please? Let me at him, Red. I'll make him Get talk. Get back there, Perkins. Keep your hands off him. I'll do the talking. But he ain't done nothing. I'll make Get him. Get back I said... Now, listen to you. I could bake a shrimp like you in two. I haven't time to argue about that. I just want to attend to my client's client. affairs. Client? Did you say client? That's like I told you, Red. He's here for Sam Dodrell. Shut up, Rogers. How about that, pint size? That's what you're here for. I'm the man you want to see. Right now, I want to see the company represented. I tell you, I got the coal rights on all the Dodrell land, and I'm telling you to keep off that property, or there'll be trouble. Thanks, Clute, for the warning. Come in. 
Mr. Wolf? Yep. I'm James Martin. Yeah, I know. Red Coot was just here. Said I could be expecting you this morning. I just met him on the path. I saw from the window. I'm here about the claim your company has against Sam Dodrill's land. Well, as far as I can tell, Clute plans to tie up all the property he can, and in time he'll sell it to the company. Well, I'm not interested in Clute's plans. All I want is a waiver from you to the effect that your company holds no claim on Sam Dodrill's place. I wouldn't advise anybody to interfere with Clute. Clute has nothing to do with this waiver. Oh, well, it don't make much difference to me one way or the other. Good. Then just sign here and here. Below. Uh-huh. All right, if it'll make you happy. Yeah. Uh, Are you satisfied? That's fine, Mr. Wolf. That waives any claim your company might have held on Sam Dodrell's coal. Is that all you wanted of me? Oh, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, this waiver closes the case. Sam Dodrell's property is absolutely clear. And if you've finished what you come up here for, young fella, take my advice and uh, get out of this valley as fast as possible. We'll see about that. You know, men have been killed around here for a lot less than happened out there on the path between you and Red Clute. And maybe this town needs a cleaning. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of things going on around here that shouldn't, but uh, you're mighty little to try fixing them, mister. Now, next time Bill Perkins decides to take a swing at you, Red Clute might not feel like stopping him. Well, I'll just go on minding my own business, Mr. Wolf, and that of my client. And thanks for the waiver. Good morning. Is Sam Dodger home? Mm. Who are you? What are you wanting to know first? I'm Jim Martin, Mrs. Dodger. A lawyer from Charleston. I'm trying to clear up Sam's coal title. Oh, well, land sakes alive. Sam, he named it to me about you coming. Oh, sit you down. Oh, it's thanks. a warm morning to be traipsing. Well, Sam asked me to come over this morning and look over his property, but I'd like to speak to him first. Oh, well, I'll call him. He's out in the barn. All right. Sam! Sam, that lawyer fellow's here. I never knowed what to tell you. Seems like it ain't been nothing but killing and shooting and shooting and killing. I don't think there'll be any more of that, Mr. Dodd. Oh, I hope not, mister. If Sam was to... Well, if that was to happen, I'd go plumb out of my mind. Oh. Howdy, Mr. Martin. Hello, Sam. Well, our little case is all cleaned up. I was down to see Fred Wolf a while ago, and he signed a paper releasing all claim which the company might have had on your property. Mm-hmm. What did Red Clute say? Clute? I didn't mention it to him. Just the same clutes out to get all the coal land it can, including mine. We'll handle him, Sam. Right now, though, I'd like to uh, make a trip around your place so I have an accurate description of the property to attach to this waiver. Oh, now, be careful. No telling who you're liable to run into again the hill. Oh, I don't expect any trouble. Uh, where will I strike the north line of your property, Sam? Well, now, there's a jagged cliff. Yeah. You can't miss it. Then the fence will start back down the hill, past an old abandoned cabin on the back property. You'll see it. Yeah, I'm sure I will. And uh, I may stop by again after I've ridden around. And please, Mr. Martin, don't let no shooting get started. Like Doc Allen says, one killing always leads to another. Uh, Getting into the woods now, Danny. Don't scrape me off the saddle. Any of these low branches, eh? That's a good girl. Yeah. Pine needle's almost like a carbon. Should fight that jagged cliff, but... Yep. There she is. Now that'll be the north line. Now the... What's that? In those huckleberry bushes. A man! He's been shot. Good Lord, he's dead. It's Bill Perkins. Howdy. You're not going to shoot me, are you? Oh. Oh, it's you, York. Hello, I didn't hear you. I tried not to make any noise when I heard that commotion over here. He's dead. Who's dead? Bill Perkins. Shot in the back of the head. Say, that's not good. 
You better let me have your gun. Look, I never fired it. Well, I know you didn't do it, Jim. You have no reason to shoot a man you never seen before. He was dead when I found him. Well, that's your word for it. You see anybody else on the hill? Yeah, coming up through the woods, but he disappeared before I got a good look at him. When was that? Just before I found Perkins. What's that in your hand? What? That piece of paper. Where'd you get it? Oh, I found it beside Perkins' body. Hmm. Huh. Looks like a corner of a heavy manila envelope. Yeah. It looks sort of familiar to me. I sure wish somebody else had found a body. Who do you reckon did it? Well, I'd say any one of four people. Four? Who? You and the fellow that you saw just before you found Perkins. That's two. Who else could have done it? Well, me, of course. I was close enough. But we know that's not true. That's three. Who else? Sam Dodrell. Oh, not Sam York. I left him at the house. Well, what of it? He could have beat you here, riding around the old turkey trail. He comes out just behind that abandoned cabin over there. Ah, Sam expected more trouble from But even after I got the waiver from Fred Wolf. So maybe we ought to find him as soon as possible. Clute's mind works in a funny way. If he thinks he already has Sam tied up, he'll turn toward the next person in his way. And Jim, I imagine that might be you. We want to know who shot him, I say. Who shot Bill Perkins? Well, Clute, I'd expect you to be at the head of a mob like this. Who shot him? You probably know as much about that as I do. Where was he killed? We found him on Sam Dodrell's property. Oh, Dodrell, eh? Where is that low-down coyote? Right here, Clute. Come as soon as I heard, Doc. Dodrell, you done it. You killed Bill Perkins. Don't start any trouble here, Clute. Who found him? I did. Oh. You shot him, didn't you, Jim Martin? You killed Bill because he beat you up this morning. You swore you'd get it. I never spoke a word to Bill Perkins, and you know it. I was there and heard you, and so did Stump Rogers. Yeah, that's right. Boy, you'd get Bill after he beat you up this morning. Yeah. I reckon there's only one thing to do with a dirty dog like that, huh, fellas? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, it seems to me you're lining up pretty fast, Clute. Martin didn't kill Bill Perkins. When I come on him beside Perkins' body, not one bullet had been fired from his gun. Could have replaced a bullet, couldn't he? Nobody but a fool would be caught over a dead man with an empty gun. Now, listen, instead of letting Clute here run this valley, it seems to me you ought to get the sheriff and let him handle it. He ain't no good. He only done what he's told. Yeah. Wait, wait. The killing was done on my place. Yes, that's right. Clute right. named me once as the murderer. Now he's a tenant on Martin. Seems to me like he don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, how about that? And like Mr. Martin yeah. says... I figure we ought to get the sheriff in. Me and on, Seth will watch the place. You got my word for it. This fellow will be here when you get back. And while you're doing that, you might find out where Clute and Rogers spent the morning. Fred Wolf will name that to you. We was there in his back office talking to him for the last two hours. I reckon we'll check on that story. Come on, men. Now, Seth, if that skunk ain't here when we get back, I'm holding you and Mark responsible. Come on, boys. Yeah. Thank goodness Sam talked them into waiting. Now, where's the revolver, Jim? They'll want to see it when they come back. Lying on the table where you put it. I saw Clute was going to start trouble, so I went after it. Anyone see you? No, but when I picked it up, one bullet was missing. Ah, Clute's dead set to frame you, all right. Where'd you say the gun is? Right where you put it. Where I put it on the table. That's right. It's not there now. What? Look for yourself. But it was there just a minute ago. Somebody's taken it. It's got to be here somewhere, York. It's no use, Jim. The gun's gone. If I can't produce that gun, Luke he... must figure you're the next person in his way. And so far, he's framed you perfectly. You think maybe he took the gun? Him or Stump Rogers. What do we do? Head for Sam Dodrell's. Get your saddlebags. But if we run, York, it'll look like I'm guilty. We've got to have time to think. Come on. What about the guard? We'll slip out the back way. But, York, you... No time to argue. Clute's got them all stirred up now. A little more talk and they'll be ready for a lynching. <laughs> Howdy, men. I sort of figured you two'd strike out for here. What took you so long? Came around back of the mountain to avoid Toot's gang. Frank Frost rode over a while back. He'd been down at the fork. What's happened? Flute's getting them all fired up and ready to hang Mr. Martin as soon as night comes out. Uh, two or three hours, not much time. Enough, maybe, because I think I've got a lead on who killed Perkins. What's that, hell? I think so, but first I want to see the stage driver. Frank Frost? That's right, my companion of last night. But the company payroll didn't come in, you know that. That's just it. It's still due. Well, yeah, but... It's just an idea of mine, York. If nothing happens, I'll meet you and Sam back here just before sundown. <laughs> Come 
Now, let's get started. Yeah, it's in a necktie party and quite a spell. Yeah, yeah what are we waiting for? Now, don't be hasty, men, but I know how you feel. You all knew Bill Perkins, a fine man. Last time I saw him, he was going to help Sam Dodwell straighten out his coal claim. And for that, he was shot in the back of his head. Oh, come on, Red. You done told us that a hundred times. Yeah, but there's more to it than that. This Martin feller was in on it, too. Yeah, we all seen him running out of the doc's office with a gun. Yeah, yeah we know that. We know what we're after. Let's slide out after him. All right, men. That's how you want it. That's how you want it. All right, we'll start out in pairs. Hank? You take two men and make straight for Sam's place. All right, Red. Now, uh, you, Nat, take a man and circle around the far side of the dot road. Which way are you and Roger going? we we'll take the lower road, make our way across the hills. If we head for the junction, we'll stop him. Oh, oh, Daddy. Oh. Jim, is that you? Yes, you are. Sam and I were getting worried. I... I think I found something interesting. Well, you shouldn't be roaming the hills with a lynching party out. Everybody's gone crazy, even Frank Frost. Frost? What's he done? For the last hour, he's been telling Clute's gang that he's scared to bring the mail over tonight. Says this is the last day before payday and the money's bound to come tonight. Clute's bunch scare him? Well, not enough to, for him to leave the payroll at the junction. Last I heard, he was all fixed up to go after. Good. But where's Sam? In the house. Sam! Sam! Yeah, Doc? We better get started, Sam. They'll be here any minute. Uh. York. Remember last night you told me about an old turkey trail that led back to Sam's place? Sure. And last night you said that same trail cuts across the mountain and meets the road to the junction? Well, that's right, it does. In other words, a man on horseback could ride from the junction to that old abandoned cabin on the back of Sam's place without going through Stony Fork. Well, I reckon so. How about that, Sam? Well, it ain't used none much, but I reckon a fella could get through. Good. Let's get a move on, then. We don't want to run into Clute's gang. Yes, but where are we going? to the old abandoned cabin at the back of Sam's property. Jim, why we're hanging around this old cabin, I don't know. Where's the path leading in from the junction road? Down that away. Comes out in back of the cabin there. And get where you can keep an eye on the cabin, but don't make a move till I tell you, no matter what you see. Listen, they coming from the junction road? Well, it sure sounds that way. Then do just as I say. I think luck is with us. Follow me. And don't make a sound. There's a light inside the cabin. I was right. It's Clute and Rogers. Clute and Rogers. We've got to get in there quick. What's that in Clute's hand? The company mail sack, Sam. Maybe with a payroll. A payroll? It is, by thunder. Yeah, I see it. It was them all the time using my place. Throw down that gun, Clute, and come out. Shoot above his head, Sam. He throwed the mail sack out in the window. Drop your guns and come out, Clute, or we'll shoot to kill. No, no, don't shoot. Let me out of here. Come on, Rogers, and bring Clute with you. Ah, Clute's done shot out the lantern. The cabin. He set it afire. Jim, Jim, come back here. Where are you going, boy? To get the mail sack. Come back, Martin. They'll shoot you down. The whole cabin's ablaze. They'll have to run for it. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I've had enough, men. Don't shoot up. I'm coming. Keep your hands up, Rogers. Move back. The whole cabin's in flames now. Where's Clute? He won't come out. Nobody will ever get red alive. We can start back now. There ain't no wind. Nothing here about so burn. Hey, that ought to be Frank Frost. Hi there, Mr. Martin. Howdy, Frank. Howdy, Frank. You come here all right? Yes, Frank, it worked fine. Uh, you all right? Sure. Went off slick to whistle. Ah. I done just what she said. You, you done what, Frank? Mr. Martin figured it was clued after the mail last night. So he told me to spread the word round that the payroll was bound to come tonight, this being the last day before payday. Well, how'd you figure it was clued after the mail? Well, I first got the idea when I talked to Fred Wolf this morning. Fred Wolf? What did he have to do with it? Well, when he tried to protect Red, 
knowing that Clute was buying coal right out from under the company, I knew something was wrong. Hmm. Well, I figured maybe he tipped Clute off when the payroll was likely to be arriving. But how did you figure that Clute would try for the payroll tonight? Remember how the men were roaring to lynch us when they left your office, York? Yeah, I was surprised at the time that Sam was able to talk Clute into waiting. Well, it gave me the idea that Clute had something else up his sleeve. I wondered about that myself. I took a chance and had Frank pass the word around that the money was sure to come tonight. Clute was using a posse to draw attention away from him and Rogers. Exactly. Remember that little uh, scrap of paper I found beside Perkins' body? The one you said looked familiar to you? Uh-huh. Well, I remembered the company envelopes I'd seen on Fred Wolf's desk and figured that scrap would match. But what gave you the idea if Clute was using the old abandoned cabin on Sam's place? It was a perfect hideout. Now I begin to see why you were interested in that old turkey trail that leads across the mountains from the junction. Yeah, but who killed Perkins and why? Red Clute. He thought Perkins got the payroll last night and refused to split. And you figured all this out from a little scrap of paper. Well, the scrap set me on the right track. I spent the afternoon here at the cabin making sure. But how could you be sure? I found the rest of the envelope. Is that you, Sam? Yes, Sarah. We got it all straightened out, Miss Dodrell. Yeah, next thing to do is get rid of that sheriff. What about you, Jim? You'd make a good sheriff. Ain't much size to you, but you got sense and you don't scare off easy. I was scared this morning down at York's place when I saw that bullet was missing. Ah, I wonder what happened to it. Hey, you, Rogers. Hey, come on. What happened to that bullet? Well, uh, I took it. Uh, figured it would make things look worse. Uh, and I took that gun. When I seen the bullet was missing, I took it so Doc, that you wouldn't get into trouble. Well, that clears it all up, then. Well, come on in the house, Mr. Martin. I think the folks will like to see you. After all, you're part of the family now. Hill Lawyer is from the novel by Hubert Skidmore and was adapted for radio by Howard Carraway. The part of Jim Martin was played by Lawson Zerbe. Others in the cast were Jim Bowles, Kermit Murdoch, Walter Vaughn, Richard Keith, Jack McBride, and Tony Merle. Music was conducted by Henri Nosco, and the production was under the direction of Herbert Rice. NBC and its affiliated independent stations present Adventure Ahead as a public service. (laughs) 